I have a question for you. How can you see something when it's smaller than light itself without using X-ray microscopy? The answer? Lasers. So, you've heard of microscopy. You've probably even used a microscope yourself, where you probably would have seen something that looked a bit like this. Or this. Or maybe even this. Or this, or this, or this. And you've probably heard of X-ray microscopy, which lets us take these sorts of crazy zoomed-in pictures. But what I've not seen many people talking about is super-resolution microscopy, which is weird to me, because X-rays are cool and all, but super-resolution microscopy is literally about using lasers to see things with visible light that are literally smaller than the light itself, which it sounds a little bit crazy, actually, if you've never really thought about it before, but proteins, DNA, and even the insides of E. coli are a lot smaller than visible light. The smallest wavelength of visible light is about 250 nanometers, which is very tiny. But even smaller than that is a molecule of hemoglobin with a diameter of about 5 nanometers. So how, then, could we see hemoglobin? Well, you can't just use normal microscopy, that's for sure. You can try and zoom in past 250 nanometers, but if you're just using visible light and no other fancy trickery, the laws of physics literally prevents you from being able to. You physically cannot distinguish between two points that are within 125 nanometers of each other if you're using 250 nanometer light. They just blur into one blob. Now, one way to overcome the diffraction limit is to, well, not actually overcome it at all. Instead, you just opt for smaller and smaller wavelengths of light, going along the spectrum from visible light to UV to X-rays, so that you can resolve smaller and smaller distances. But X-rays aren't always ideal, especially for us cell biologists. See, to reduce the wavelength, you have to pack more and more energy into those photons to squish the wavelength down and get it smaller and all that energy ends up being harmful for life. I mean, UV rays cause skin cancer. Can you imagine what prolonged exposure to X-rays would do to a cell? There are ways to reduce this damage, and you kind of have to if you want to do X-ray microscopy, but this requires fixing the specimen most of the time, which is not the same as fixing a dog. It basically means freezing it, either literally or by using chemicals to stop all its metabolic processes, or some combination of both. And then you dose it with an extremely limited amount of X-ray radiation, because even then you still run the risk of shredding it to pieces. Again, you don't want to look at the charred remains of the thing, you want to look at the thing. But what happens if I want to watch a hemoglobin molecule moving around in a red blood cell? I don't want it to be frozen. A lot of us biologists just, we're stalkers. We want to see what it's doing, where it's going, who it's interacting with. A frozen image just really isn't very useful for that. I mean, the TV series You would be really boring if its victims were just, you know, statues for the entire show. And that's where our good friend, the laser, comes in. When you shine light, say from a laser, on a fluorescent molecule, then that molecule will first absorb the light, and then it'll emit it back out again at a really specific wavelength. So if you shine a blue laser at green fluorescent protein, for example, then it shines green. It's like shining UV light on a white top and watching it glow purple. If I shone UV light on this right now, then it would probably start glowing purple. If we put on a filter for just that and block out everything but the emitted wavelength, then we can start to see just the fluorescent molecules and nothing else. Say then that we take a red blood cell and we tag all the hemoglobin inside of it with a fluorescent marker. If we shine laser light across a sample under the microscope and filter it out, then all we'll see is little dots corresponding to the hemoglobin molecules. So far, this still has the same problem of being too blurry if the hemoglobin is too close together. But what we can do is focus the laser beam itself, like the point of the light, into a smaller and smaller point through some physics trickery until it's really, really tiny, like nanometers across. And then we can scan the laser across the sample so that we light up each molecule individually. So they no longer blur together because only one is actually shining at a time. If we then take pictures at regular intervals and stack them on top of each other, we can actually start to see at distances way smaller than the limit of physics would usually allow us. And we can scan so quickly that actually when you line it up, you can still see it in real time. And this field is advancing really quickly. In fact, this paper managed to resolve distances smaller than a nanometer across. So that's basically super resolution microscopy in a nutshell. Anyway, yeah, enjoy this footage of some super resolution microscopes. Yeah, thanks for watching and let me know what you thought of it in the comment sections. Bye. What do you think of that, Luna, huh? Let's get a good shot of Luna up there. 
There she is. There she is. Taking that jump up from visible light to x-rays is a lot of extra energy. Imagine, it's kind of like as if you were trying to get a good look at the Mona Lisa, but you just couldn't stop shooting the beams from your eyes and you just char it to a crisp. You don't want to look at some charred remains, you want to look at the Mona Lisa. <laughs>